What's up, locals? It's Mike and Kenzie coming to you live from the 775. Now, before we get into this episode, we have one small request. Please be sure to like and subscribe wherever you watch or listen. Now, let's get into it. Hello, America, and welcome to one of the best podcasts, one of my favorite, the best, the most bountiful. <laughs> I can't even do Trump right. <laughs> Happy belated 4th of July to my favorite country, the best one ever. Um, Happy belated 4th. <laughs> Happy belated 4th. Happy Wednesday. How are we feeling? Are we still hungover uh, from last maybe, week? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but it kind of feels like this is the last 4th of July. Like this is the, the ending season to America. <laughs> oh, geez. Why do you think that? It just seems like the empire is falling apart. Like we had a good run, but now we're just bursting at the seams. We don't have borders anymore. <laughs> Gender ideology is on the ticket for children. And we have, like, the worst rematch in all of presidential history. I don't think anybody wants it. Like, yeah. who's yes for Biden and Trump? I'd love to see that again. I'm yes for America. I feel like yeah. this last 4th of July, I've never had more pride in living in America than I did on 4th of July. This year. This year, yeah. How so compared to last year? Because I feel like Truckee versus Reno. Truckee, we were, like, gung-ho American hitting the lake. It's more of like a mindset. Like I just feel, I, I feel like this is the time where our country needs to come together and be united because it does feel like it's kind of crumbling at the seams, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's been crumbling at the seams. It's just so public now because of social media, but right. all that to say, <laughs> what, what are you looking I, at me? I, what, I what do you mean? You. I feel like every single year people are always like, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. And I'm well, that's what Trump and Biden were saying. They're saying our country's falling apart. And Biden's like, if you vote Trump in nuclear war is going to happen. So it feels like mm -hmm. it could happen either way. It's just, it's dementia versus douchebag. And I'm on team douchebag. <laughs> like, I would at least rather have somebody who knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's the shittiest choice. I feel like no one wants that. No, like, the failing forward for this week is America failed. We lost because of that debate. Like, yeah. That was embarrassing to watch. No, it was very brutal, but also the most entertaining debate I've ever seen. It actually got me like really into politics. <laughs> I was like, wait, do I like politics now? Like All of a sudden, do I care about <laughs> golf? <Do> I <laughs> <laughs> like when they started debating about who can have a better drive and Biden's handicap being six or eight, I was like, oh, Jesus. Like this is falling off the rails. Ugh, it was just comedy gold. Mm-hmm. It was pretty entertaining. The Trump thing where he's like, I don't know what he said. I don't think he does either. <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. I think a hard stop on that debate would have literally just been him looking at him and going, what? Yeah. <laughs> what did you just say? Because there were so many times where there's just blunders and it's hard to watch. And both of them are probably like shot all the way up on Adderall and everything else under the sun just yeah. to be dialed for 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. It felt like a big ego war was happening on television. Mm -hmm. Like n both of them don't want to be president. They said, they both said that they literally are both running so that the other one doesn't win. Yeah. That's not a good reason to become president. Yeah. <laughs> I want America to win. I want America to win. I want to be in a safe country, a safe country with low taxes and things are affordable. Don't turn us into Venezuela. Yeah. Like, like is that too much to ask. I don't think it is. I don't think that's wrong to ask, but no. regardless, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about grifters yes. because it's been all over my social media. All over mine too. And even on the Trump like train, don't get me wrong. Like I like the guy because he's entertaining. He's not welcome at my dinner table, but Trump is like a classic political grifter. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, grifter is basically a swindler. It's somebody who's sabotaging you you don't really know but they're tricking you right a trickster a con artist a grifter a swindler yes it's all synonymous um trump was a lifelong democrat and then at the presidential dinner obama called him out and was like you might be a billionaire but you'll never be president and donald was like fuck you guys i will become president mm -hmm. and so he couldn't run on the democratic ticket he wouldn't get in by the dnc so he's like fuck it i'll just become a republican and he's convinced, like, working-class America, middle-class America, that he represents you as a billionaire. Right. That's 
I feel like there's the irony that people aren't seeing is like this guy represents us. He wants low taxes. He wants to create jobs. He doesn't give a shit about you. Like he wants to continue lining his own pockets, as do all politicians. And then the other one on the other side of that political spectrum was Nancy Pelosi. Aunt Nancy. Um, She was Speaker of the House for what feels like ever, probably like 50 years. And what she did was she enriched herself. And her salary was somewhere between 170 and 220, like 220,000 a year. And in 2021, she had her wealthiest of all years making $170 million. How do you make $170 million when you get paid 220 grand a year? What, what is that called? Uh, insider insider trading? trading? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So there were multiple instances. One was um, when the government, before they voted on it, this was like on the ticket. It's private information, not public. And she knew that they were going to announce the federal government would be switching to electric vehicles by 2030. So she bought a shitload of Tesla stock. They voted on it. It passed. She made a bunch of money. The most egregious was, I think it was like a week before Google got sued by eight states and the Department of Justice. Mm. She sold $3 million worth of Google stock. And then a few days later, they get raided by the DOJ. They come in. That's like information that's public to them, not to us. That's complete insider trading. She didn't get in trouble for it. But other members of Congress were like, hey, that's totally illegal. So they created the Pelosi Act. Do you know what that is? No. So it's an acronym with her last name. And it stands for Preventing Elected Leaders from Owning Securities and Investments. No. It's the Pelosi Act. Because she is like, she's had better stock and investment success than Warren Buffett, than every single like CEO of BlackRock, all of them who have direct like success over years and years and years. Her time in Congress literally yielded hundreds of millions of dollars. How is she not in jail? So that was part of, I think, why she was so anti-Trump was because if her team loses, now she's liable. Right. But if all of her buddies are in office and they're in the DOJ, they're in the the prosecuting branches of the government. Right. um, They won't go after her. Right. So I think she kind of saw this second second round between Trump and Biden coming and stepped down because she's also ancient. She's like <laughs> she's seriously ancient. She is older than Velcro. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> like you can look it up. Nancy Pelosi was born before Velcro was created. <laughs> so that's how old that bitch is. Oh. She was in I think she was in Congress since at least nineteen eighty seven. And she oh just stepped gosh. in last year or the year before. You know how at 25, it's like that's when your brain is supposed to be fully developed. At what age does your brain start deteriorating? Mm. Like, I feel like... Probably like 50. But I feel like at that point, shouldn't that be a consideration for politicians? Like... Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Like, if we're going to talk about brains developing, like, oh, you know, you can't rent a car until you're 25, like all these different regulations for young adults. I feel like... There should be some considerations around that for when you get older. There I mean, you have to retake sure. your driver's license test when you get older. Mm-hmm. In certain states. Arizona has like a 60-year period when you get your license versus when you need to test again. Yeah. Um, for president, you have to be at least 35. They have a minimum age. They don't have a maximum age. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the maximum age cutoff should probably be like 72 because – You'll live long enough to see what the ramifications are of everything that you voted in that you've allowed to happen. Right. And you can be held, like, responsible for any issues that you create. Yeah, I think that should happen. Yeah. What's an ideal president age for you? Like, if you had to pick a number. Mm, Probably, like, 47. 47? Yeah. I feel like at that point, you've seen multiple decades go by. You've been able to experience life Mm -hmm. and now you're able to make some changes and you're going to want to be part of those changes and actually benefit from them Mm -hmm. so there's more motivation for you to actually do good i would hope Mm. i think like 55 to 60 mid 50s to late 50s because you're old enough to have had adult children so Mm. everything that goes on you're going to be responsible like you want your kids to prosper and be okay you don't want to leave them in like a dumpster fire I don't think Biden gives a shit. I don't think he knows if there's going to be a dumpster fire tomorrow. There's already one happening. Right. So He has young kids, though. Doesn't he? Mm, I'm pretty Are sure Hunter's in, their... in his 40s or 50s. Oh, I thought he had another one that was in his 20s. We have to realize Biden's like 80. Oh, wait, no. I'm talking 82. about Trump. 
Uh, yeah, he has Baron. Yeah, isn't Baron like in his twenties? Um, I think so. He either just turned twenty. He's young, but Trump's been up, fucking. Actually. Yeah, Baron. There's a really funny meme of Baron, and they like extended his arms and legs because he's super tall and lanky. And it was like, "Don't worry, father. Leave the liberals to me." <laughs> there's like this crazy conspiracy about Baron Trump. Did I tell you about it? No, but I just NBC News said the <laughs> headline. Is Trump gets Barron's age wrong when asked about his youngest son's convention <laughs> role? <laughs> well, he's also old as shit. His mind is slipping. And I think that that's also apparent. And you have to see both sides. Uh, can you pull up the Barron Trump conspiracy on Wikipedia just to kind of take us through what that is? Because my general recollection of it is there's this right wing conspiracy of. Is it the Barron Trump novels? Yes. Okay. So. The Baron Trump novels are two children's novels written in 1889 and 1893 by American author and lawyer Ingersoll Lockwood. They remained obscure until 2017 when they received media attention for perceived similarities between their protagonists and U.S. President Donald Trump. Um, There's something about time travel and him coming back to save the United States. Okay, so I'm just going to read this. Yeah, go for I it. I can also edit this part out. Mm -hmm. um, Lockwood published the first novel, Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog, Bulger, in 1889, and its sequel, Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey in 1893. The novels recount the adventures of the German boy Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump, <laughs> who goes Wilhelm by Baron Heinrich. Trump. Who goes by Baron Trump as he discovers weird underground civilizations, often the often oh sorry, <laughs> offends the natives, flees from his entanglements with local women, and repeats this pattern until arriving back at Castle Trump. Wait, hold on. Okay, so let's go through that again. Offends the natives, flees from entanglements with local women, and returns to Castle Trump. Yes. This sounds like the 2024 election. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the creepiness of, um, who was it, C.K. Lewis? The Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? Lewis Carroll's. Lewis Carroll's, thank you. So, he's a pervert. He wrote that story for an underage girl that he had a love affection for, and the parents were cool with it. But I'm pretty sure she was way underage, like 10, 11, 12, and he had a full-blown, like, I want to marry you type of relationship with this girl, and wrote that book for her. Ew. Yeah. And now oh, photo of Alice taken by Lewis Carroll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's like so a... So it was literally about... Yeah. It was about her. There's like weird photos of her sitting on his lap. Like the whole thing is creepy. But Alice in Wonderland is also creepy. So, yeah. I know. It's like a classic though. I love Alice in Wonderland. Okay. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the grifters. Um, yeah. So I feel like with, with the grifters that I'm seeing on social media, um, I feel like it's important to point them out because, you know, our generation probably thinks, oh, I'm not going to get swindled by someone calling me over the phone. Like how old, old like people. The Nigerian prince. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? The Nigerian <laughs> prince is a classic scam where you either get a phone call or an email saying I have millions of dollars locked in this account. Like, my people are trying to execute oh, okay. me. I need you to send me $5,000 in Walmart gift cards yeah. so that I can unlock it and I'll send you 50. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. So, I feel like, you know, it's probably a common mindset. Oh, that could never happen to me. I know better than that. But these online grifters mm -hmm. are preying on people in our age group mm -hmm. who are vulnerable, who are maybe going through, like, a loss of identity. And it's important to point them out because you know, don't get caught. You don't want to, you don't want to get swept up in it. And it, it's, it's a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. um, well, I love some of the ones that pop up on my timeline. Yeah. I think they're hilarious. Um, Wes Watson has been this common one popping up. So there's across the grift of social media, there's different categories, right? His is like first day out of prison and become a millionaire without a degree. Mm -hmm. So it's a get rich quick scheme buy my coaching programs and basically his entire philosophy is screaming at grown men where they're like, okay, I'm not having as many sales as I want to. He's like, do better. Fuck you pussy. Yeah. And hangs up on them. He's like total scam artist where people will show up into these chat rooms that are supposed to be one-on-one -on -one time with him. They pay thousands of dollars to get counseling and coaching from him. 
and sometimes he doesn't show. Sometimes his advice is just screaming at them. Like, there's a couple guys out there like that. Which is so crazy to me. Like, to pay that much money. I remember watching um, a recording of one of his one-on-ones, and the guy was like, yeah, I have like four one-on-ones right now. I think I need to restructure the model of how I'm doing it. And he was like, oh, I have four one-on-ones? Like, grow up, work harder. Like he's literally screaming at them, like not really giving them sound advice, but even the guy complaining about having four one-on-ones and thinking he needs to restructure his whole business because of that. Like it just gives me this mindset that there are people out there that are truly like dumb. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. 10% of the population is unemployable and they, they are the easiest prey. Yeah. They don't see like, that's, that's part of something I want to get into later. But generally speaking, there's like 10% of people walking around that are suckers. Yeah. And they're easy to get got. They don't have critical thinking skills. Well, they... to be honest, I think the reason I'm so sensitive to this is because I feel like I was one of those people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I got, yeah, I've been I, got. I have gotten got. And <laughs> I was going to do this as a failing forward before we decided to have America fail forward. Um, but like for me, when I was a sophomore in college here at the Meadowood Mall in Reno. I was like shopping around due to doing. And you know those people that are in the middle of the mall and they have their little pop-up shops? Like the sneaker guys that Yes, like, like either the sneaker dirty vans and then I'll charge you six Yeah, dollars. or the people with the perfume or like mm. the Well, I called them sharks growing up. Like me and my mom, whenever we would go through the Stone Ridge Mall, we would call them sharks and my mom was like, just keep walking. Like don't even look them in the eye. <laughs> Well, me being now by myself, a sophomore in college, I'm walking through the Meadowood Mall and this lady comes up to me in her like Russian accent and she's like telling me, oh, you have such a beautiful face. Like, do you want to look at some of our products? And, you know, I'm I just didn't know how to say no at that time. So I'm like, okay. So I sit down in her chair. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to get some free products and I'll be able to say no and walk out. She puts on like a full face on me, Mm -hmm. like cleans my face. Uh, serums, moisturizers, and then she has like this natural foundation. All in all, I spent $400. <laughs> 400 I spent $400. What happened to saying no at the end? I didn't, exactly. I don't know what, I was by myself. I felt pressure and I felt like I couldn't say no. <laughs> and like, I, I, yeah, I immediately regretted it. I came, I came home to my roommates and I was like, I did something really bad. (laughs) Like I just spent $400 and I don't want any of this stuff. And they're like, well, you need to go return it. And I'm like, I'm so scared to go return this. Like, I don't even know if I can return it. Mm -hmm. Like I was just, so anyway, that like all that to say, I feel like I'm just very sensitive because I do feel like I was one of those people. And then honestly, like more time just living life and like being more set in my ways, like understanding what my beliefs, my morals are. I feel like it's easier for me to say no to people. But a lot of people out there don't know how to say no to people, you know? Yes. I think that's like the prime target is somebody who does not know how to say no and you can back them into a corner where they can't escape. Right. Those are the people that you can get money from very easily. But also these grifters are are doing it in a way where it's like, they don't even have to have a one-on-one with them or have them in person. They're Mm -hmm. doing it over social media. Mm -hmm. And they're creating these reels where it's like, oh, I made $1 million in less than two years by doing this. So the specific grifter that I wanted to pull up, it's a group of people. It's the people that promote affiliate marketing. Yes. I have come across so many social media profiles on Instagram where it's the same bio. Mm -hmm. Like, I will help or what does it say? Um, I help people make money from home. $1 million in less than two years. DM, I'm ready to learn more. Free beginner's guide below. So they give you a free offering, something to get you in. Yes. So, you know, me being a little nosy and me being a little curious, I'm like, okay, let's actually see what this beginner's guide is all about because I want to know, like, what are they actually offering? Mm-hmm. So I, I downloaded it, and it's literally this Canva-made online PDF and it's the most basic four-step process. Probably written by ChatGPT. Literally. Yeah. And it's like, find your niche. <laughs> like, <laughs> like create an automated email 
Um, Everything that you fell for to get to this stage. Right. But the thing is, is they're promoting how to do affiliate marketing. They're not actually doing affiliate marketing. That's the difference, right? So for those who don't know like what affiliate marketing is, affiliate marketing is if you have like a large audience, let's just say you are doing a podcast or whatever, you're like a, um, I don't know, like a famous snowboarder, whatever. If you have a large audience of some kind through whatever you're doing and you were really interested in a product, you could go to their page and you could just type in your name. They'll create a link for you. You can promote it on your page and say, hey, like check out YFL 10% off this product. And then when people use that link, they get 10% off the product. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that because I've done that before. Yes. And it it actually like affiliate marketing is not the issue here. Mm -hmm. It's the people that are teaching you how to do affiliate marketing that, that have I have a problem with. They've got nothing. But like that's the problem that I'm having that people are literally getting swept up into. So I do a deeper dive, right? So I'm going through these profiles. Literally all of them have like the same thing in their bio. Mm-hmm. They have the same type of like free beginner's guide. Well, at the very bottom of the beginner's guide, it's um, I did this 15-day challenge and you have to pay for it. And that's how you really kickstart your business is by doing this 15-day challenge. Like, here's the beginner guide, but if you really want to make money, you got to go through this challenge. Well, I click on the challenge. Four of them all led back to this one guy that was promoting affiliate marketing, which is David Sharp. And it's he's very public. Um, so, yeah, so I don't feel like it's bad saying his name. But anyway, so he is promoting to go through this 15-day challenge for $5.00. And he's going to give you like all the hooks, all of like email templates, um, social media ideas, one-on-ones, everything that you can think of. Full build out. Yeah. Full build out of this online business. And the interesting part of his speech that he was giving in his video is he's like, are you going to take this opportunity? Mm -hmm. And he was like, don't listen to the gurus out there. Like he was using words like that where he's like, I'm not like these people, mm-hmm. but you are. You're doing exactly You're doing what you're ex- do. exactly that. Yeah. And that's the issue that I'm having because it's like, oh, and then another thing too, like with the beginner guide, and I was reading like one of uh, one of the ladies' uh, stories. She's like, I'm a single mom, an ex-nanny, and I'm married to a skeptical guy. Like just to make sure that whoever's reading this knows like – I was a skeptic too before I got into this. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why are you promoting how to make affiliate, like how to do affiliate marketing? Why don't you just do affiliate marketing? I'm so successful. I want to help others. Yeah. I'm mission driven. That's, that's their selling point is like, I'm not here to make money off of you. I'm here for you to make money and you also pay me. Right. Yeah. But they're not actually doing the thing that they're teaching. Right. That's that's the part that's silly to me. And it's like, I just hope that people are able to recognize that because it took me a while to understand like skepticism and like how to be a skeptic. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to be negative. Yeah. And then I met you and you're (laughs) like skeptic about most things in the world. And you're like, look at this, look at this, but it opens up your eyes to where you're like, Oh, like there's bad people out there that are going to try and take my money and actually try to like swindle me. Yeah. There's a sucker born every minute. in America. Yeah. I got swindled by F, or I guess it's called Forex. Um, What it is is a foreign exchange like platform. Yeah. And the basic breakdown is you're like not being skeptical. Um, There's a word for it and it's slipping my mind. Doesn't really matter. You're speculating. So you're speculating currency and you're basically gambling. Is the value of the dollar against the euro going to go up or down? And you place a bet on that based on a percentage. And if you're correct, you win more of that like euro or dollar that you're betting on. Mm. And then you can pull from the market and yay, I won. It's kind of like the stock exchange for currency. Where I got got was a coaching program for $500 where I got access to all these tools, how to trade, the websites, everything. All these YouTube videos of like, this is what you're looking for, this market. It was just a bunch of fucking graphs that somebody put together. And I was like, God damn it. Like, I was so upset because mm-hmm. I was skeptic going into it. And then they're showing me real time trades. They're like, see, I made 10 grand today. And I was like, can I see that happen in real time? Yeah. My buddy pulls up his phone, pulls up his account, it's got 10 grand in it. I'm like, fine. Not my buddy, by the way. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was my buddy. He was like a guy that I knew through rugby. 
from like years ago. Yeah. And we just happened to be in the same place, same time. And he got me. And that's okay. Cause I mean, again, it's something that you learn from and it's good to be aware of that. But I wonder like, not even that I wonder, I look back and I'm just like, what state of mind was I in? Right. Like to be get rich, quick, vulnerable, not a lot of capital. Right. You want to skip steps. Like that's the biggest thing. It's that I skipping see. steps. Yeah. Well, I see it. This is like the common grifter target that I'm noticing too, that I follow for some reason because I think it's hilarious. It's Christian moms at home, 18 to 35, with little to no work experience. And they're like, do you want to be your own business owner? Do you want to be your own boss? Mm -hmm. Well, subscribe to my page, buy my platform. I'm going to teach you all the coaching steps and you're going to be your own boss. And it's like, it's a blend somewhere between a pyramid scheme and a grift. Yeah. And so it's women that are selling like, access to yetis that you can go buy at safeway rei anywhere mm-hmm. they're like use my link because then i get a percentage it's everything that i'm buying all my friends are we all do it together right but i don't think they're generating income i think it probably costs more than it's actually making i think they're probably selling to their family and friends which is what pyramid schemes do yeah like recently i attended a pyramid scheme presentation just for funsies yeah tell I, me about it i knew it was one going into it i was waiting for him to say it so i met this guy in line at the trump rally in reno And me and my friend Kevin were hammered because it was like three hours (laughs) to get in. So we're being jackasses, like just drinking twisted teas in line publicly. And it's hours before Trump goes on stage. Well, the news comes and they do an interview on us. They don't air it because I'm talking shit about Renoites saying like, yeah, there's a lot of smiles here. There's way more teeth than I was expecting. Like I was being (laughs) I was being rude and obnoxious. Right. And so they don't air that segment. But the guy who's standing next to us in line, we buddy up with. And so we give him a beer, we're talking, and then somehow he and I exchange phone numbers because when I'm drunk, I'm a little too friendly, and then I make plans with people that I never intend on following through with. Well, anyways, he hits me up months later, like this is probably a month ago at this point, and he's like, hey, I don't know if you remember me, you left a great impression with me, and I'm looking to build my sales team out here in Reno. Like, would you like to meet for coffee? Oh, gosh. And I was like, I already know where this is going. I did not leave a good impression with this person. I was a drunk asshole in line. Right. I am a number to him. So He's just like, he was at the Trump rally. He's probably dumb enough to join my pyramid scheme. Probably. <laughs> so he hits me up. We go meet for coffee. And I'm waiting for him to say it. All right. I attended an Amway presentation in college. They made me put on a suit and go into this boardroom with a bunch of other young hopeful kids that didn't realize what they were getting into. (laughs) Like I'm paying for my education and I don't want to know more. (laughs) It was literally like a get rich quick scheme type thing. I smelled bullshit there. I was so upset because I bought a suit to go do that. Oh my god! I was like, this is so unnecessary. They made me read, um, rich dad, poor dad to like understand your money needs to work for you. Just the gateway book. It's, it's a gateway book to make you understand there are workers and there are winners which one are you going to be <laughs> like that's that's kind of the breakdown so he didn't put me through that ringer because i was coming in immediately skeptical and he's hyping up like his business mentor he's like you've got to meet him he's such a great guy he's gotten me on track but you know i still keep like a uh, a job for benefits and like consistent income but this is what i'm growing on the side and this is my own enterprise i was like okay so then where do i come into this team like, right 20 minutes in the conversation, you haven't told me what product or service you sell. You haven't shown me any numbers. You haven't said a name of a company. What's going on? Sketch. Very. And so I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for it, waiting for it. And then he says Amway because I asked him, we've talked for so long. What's the business? He's like, it's Amway. Have you heard of it? I'm like, yes. (laughs) Yes, I have actually. And he's like, well, what have you heard about it? I was like, I've heard that it's a pyramid scheme. And I start fucking with him. And I'm like, it's very triangular in structure. You're talking about this business mentor. You haven't told me anything about what you sell. He's like, well, it's kind of like affiliate marketing. Like we find companies like Home Depot and we get links to products that everybody buys and we put them up and people can take advantage of it. Yeah. And I'm over here like, this is a pyramid scheme, buddy. Like where do I make you money when I join? And then if I get other people to join, you also get money from that. And then I get money from it. And he's like, well, kind of. I'm like, okay, you can't explain what you sell. You can't explain your business model. Come back to me when you have more information. Like sales 101, you want to overcome some obstacles? Give me information. Oh, yeah. And then he tried to spin it with like, oh, well, if you look them up, they're an A-plus rated Better Business Bureau rating for Amway. And I was like, you know, I actually did some research about that. And the people who are giving them ratings are Amway members. 
it's almost as if I had my own business and I got all of my friends together on Yelp. And I said, I need you to give me a five-star rating and say positive testimonials so that people come and think that it's five stars. And he couldn't, he couldn't rebut that. And so we left the conversation. He tried following up once more. And I'm like, I'm still not interested. Fuck off. Yeah. So they're out there. They are. Um, the griffs that beyond like the Christian moms that stay at home, I'm seeing a lot of alpha sales bros. Like Andy Elliott's a good one. Um, Andrew Tate is one of the classics now. Like he directed kind of at your brother's age group, like that 18 to 24, because it was like, you don't need college. You can buy my course and then you can start promoting my content. And the more people you bring in, it's a straight up pyramid scheme, right? Mm -hmm. like that was such a great grift. And all of them are doing the flashy, like in front of the Lambo in the mansion. We watched Ty Lopez the other day. I love that. That was like, I think I was 18 or 19 in college when that video came out. And it's Ty Lopez standing in this garage. He's like, I'm here in my garage. Got my new Lamborghini here. But you know what I'm more proud of than that? These seven new bookshelves I just <laughs> installed. Knowledge. <laughs> like, and it's literally a flex to young, impressionable men. Like, do you want nice things? Do you want money? I have those things. Here's me with beautiful women on a yacht. Everything's rented. They don't own shit. They just create these projects that people want to be a part of. And I think that's like the dangerous part of social media is because clearly it's not all real life. No. Like I think that we're heading into this next phase of social media where we want to see more real shit because I think we all it, it, everyone is having a hard time telling what the truth is. AI like is not gonna uh, help even that either. even with like you know NBC News and Fox and all these CNN like no one can tell what the fucking truth is anymore. So we just are craving real people, real stories, real shit. And it's hard to do, especially for like, you know, young, the younger generation, like Gen X. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm actually, I think Gen I'm, Z. or sorry, I'm part of Gen Z. Yeah. Right. Gen Z. Okay. That generation is coming up into the world. And I do think the fast pace of like quick fix and Brain rot. I was part of a pyramid scheme, <laughs> like a legit pyramid scheme. And I did not know. What, what pyramid scheme were you in? Did you ever hear of Verve or Vima? I've heard of Vima. Okay. So <laughs> health products. <laughs> when I was in high school, I had a friend who was part of um, this community within the church. And how convenient. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Check. But she got brought into this cult. <laughs> I don't even know. Let me. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this, to be honest. Um, well, how'd you get brought in? What was the pitch? So she got pitched by somebody, like her neighbor. Like, so it was her neighbor at the time down the street. Um, the mom was obviously like the age of our moms. And so someone that you can trust, they're actually making money. But when you went to her house, it was all Vima products. Like, I swear to God, her living room was full of boxes of Vima and Verve drinks and nutritional shit. Like, it was crazy. And so I'm thinking, like, you know, as a 16-year-old kid, I go in with my mom and I'm like, oh, like, this seems fun. I can, like, start making money and working. And, you know, my friend's doing it. Like, it seems legit, right? Like, there's a group of people. They literally had events. And the neighbor, so the mom that kind of got my friend into it, who got me into it, her son mm -hmm. is this, like, young, like, 23-year-old. Hot. Very hot. Yeah, hot, cute, handsome dude. And he's riding around in his Verve car. I think it was, like, <laughs> a Mustang or something. And... <laughs> We go to this event and I just remember my friend being like, like, that could be us. Like, we could do that. That's and great, literally great convinced my parents to help me buy this product to start selling to people. This product, I cannot sell to other 16-year-olds. So who am I going to be selling it to? Their parents. My, yeah, exactly. My, my friend's parents. Mm -hmm. Well, we bought probably like $600 worth of product and you're getting boxes of this shit. Like, I'm not even joking. It was like maybe like five or six boxes mm -hmm. of all Verve. And it got to a point where I sold nothing. 
Like I literally sold nothing. I didn't even know how to sell. There was no like strategy or like step-by-step plan of how to do that. It was just, it was just this raw, raw event of like, this is where you could be. You could get a free car and travel. And it's like, but how, like literally how (laughs) sell more boxes. And so, yeah. So it ended up being where my dad was like, no, no, we're not buying more product. He ended up taking the product actually, (laughs) because it's legit. I mean, it's, I actually just looked it up and it's still going. Um, (laughs) So's Cutco. Cutco makes great knives. Yeah. As a pyramid scheme. Right. Yeah. They're part so of it's like these marketing. legit products that are out, but man, I mean, yeah. So gosh, just so vulnerable to mm-hmm. get into that stuff. And then you get into it and it's like, literally you're not making any money off of it. And they always say it's how much you put into it. How much time and energy are you going to put into it? That's what your output is. Yeah. It's like, are you going to take this opportunity? So that's our disclaimer is you're the reason you're not making money. Not because this is a pyramid scheme. It's you. You don't have enough grind. Right. You're not grinding hard enough. It's not like it's necessarily illegal, like what's happening, because it's like a legit business, but it's it's a grift. So I have a joke on stage that I've told. I won't disclose who the person is, but a very close loved one of mine was wrapped up in a pyramid scheme selling dildos for passion parties. (laughs) And... Passion parties, they had to rebrand because they got called a pyramid scheme publicly. So they changed to Pure Romance, the same exact business structure, same products, different branding. Yeah. And it was so funny to me because she didn't realize like the the in-home presentations where you're hosting wine and game night. You invite a bunch of unsatisfied, unhappy women over to like, (laughs) oh, we're having a fun game night. And then once they're all liquored up, that's when you bring out the suitcase. (laughs) opens the suitcase you've got like the rubber fist 3000 <laughs> the jackhawk 9000 with like a six tone vibrate oh. like <laughs> and yeah so that that was a phase of life for one of my loved ones who uh no longer does it <laughs> but it was so funny to me cuz i as a child was like explain the business model let me get this straight so right. so you're buying this product wholesale at a discount <laughs> rate and you're selling it retail but because you want loyal customers, you're also discounting it for them. So you're taking a loss. <laughs> like, where's the money? <laughs> Sounds like you're spending it and then giving people discounts. And it was the funniest thing to me because I was like, this is a straight up pyramid scheme. It's, it's I'm a child hilarious. and I see the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm building it for you. It's right here. And you're you're somewhere down here. Where's Who's your downline? Like, right. Yeah. So I just think that's hilarious. Um, and also, how many dildos do you have to sell to get your money back? And who's, who's comfortable buying dildos from a friend? Right. Like, like, hey, I got this box of dildos. Don't worry, they're not used. Like, that's the other thing. <laughs> like, they're not refurbished. These are lightly used, gently used dildos. No, they, they were fresh out the box. But Oh, my yeah. gosh, that is hilarious. I mean, there's so many pyramid schemes out there. But, yeah, I think going back to the grifters, there there's a lot of them out there and mm-hmm. so we kind of wanted to break down just the signs mm-hmm. of Wait, have oh. you on your timeline because i'm getting like the alpha male sales bro pitches yeah have you been getting fempowerment griffs explain okay reclaim your divine feminine energy Come out to the woods and break sticks on the ground and oh. scream at the top of your lungs. There's actually an influencer that I've been following for years, like probably six years now. And I loved her when she first started because she was just all about like fashion and it was like, you know, wearing bright colors and it will uplift your mood. And then as the years have gone by, she's come out that she's a clairvoyant fairy. She's a grifter. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, Start using it's words like, like clairvoyant fairy and yes. you lose me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I still follow her because I just like, I don't know, her content just follow brings me, me for happiness. More fashion advice and also. But she, she does that. She brings people to the beach. And it's the same thing where it's like people are literally screaming out their inner femme mm-hmm. energy and, yeah. you know, coming back to. You know what that's called? What? Expensive therapy. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. It's overpriced. Well, it's also therapy. like. I don't know where the credibility is coming from Mm -hmm. because it's like these people over the years, it's they, they get into this habit that they start doing. Right. And they do it for themselves. And they're like, man, I'm an expert at this. This made me happy. So now I am going to use this as my expertise and sell it to people, which is like, I don't want to knock that because I I do find that alternative medicine and alternative ways of like living and, Mm -hmm. 
and in mindsets. Business. Yeah, in, in business, like it does work, but there's real shit out there. There's yeah, also a lot of fake stuff. Totally. I just think, yeah, there's a lot of fake stuff out there too. And she, I lit- literally, within a six year time span, it went from talking about fashion to literally being a clairvoyant fairy that roams the beach and helps yeah, women. People. Yeah, basically, like, kind of. A little bit. Like, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's just very interesting. Yeah, so I don't, I don't get the fempowerment for some reason. It doesn't come to me. I wonder why. Yeah, like I'm not their <laughs> target audience or something. I do get the alpha sales bros and the masculinity boot camps. Mm. And it is the funniest thing to me because it's a bunch of ice baths and exercise. Guys are like running on the beach in their like weighted vests at four in the morning. They look like they're training to be Navy SEALs, but they're all these like fat doughy shells of a man. Oh. Okay, And they're getting screamed at by these very muscular men. And it makes me think it's some kind of kink where you're paying like 11 grand to go to this two week boot camp and get screamed at by other men calling Just you. Just go to the bitch. army. Literally, like just enlist. Like, oh, I want to be a better husband. Be a better husband. Don't pay another man to scream at you and then like, oh, now I'm a man. That's not how that works. It's just so funny to see that because it's been consistently popping up on my timeline. Mm-hmm. And thankfully memes and like meme influencers are clowning them because I feel like other guys might see that and get caught. Like, this might benefit me. Well, that's the best thing about the internet is the internet will also call out bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, it sniffs it out very quickly, and then it becomes a meme. Yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of mental health issues on the internet, so beware of that, too. Like, I can point my finger and call bullshit. I could also be totally wrong. Mm -hmm. I just think I'm right on this one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So when it comes to spotting them, right? I think the first question that you need to ask is what makes a guru, like that character caricature, what makes a grifter attractive, right? Because they, they have an appeal to people. That's why it's this personality type and it keeps popping up. And it, it goes across class, race, religion, sex, does not matter. There's grifters yes. at all levels. Mm-hmm. So can you think of anything specific that pops up when you like picture a guru, so to speak? They are motivational speakers in a way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like they're the best, but if you're in a room with them, they're just going to keep talking and they're going to wear you down. That's what I notice in the videos that they have is they have the longest videos without, you can't skip them. They just, (laughs) (laughs) it's just them talking and repeating themselves until you get so tired and drained from what they're saying that you're just like, fuck it, I'll do it. Mm I would say that that's one element okay. to a grifter. Because one that I constantly see, it's an immediate red flag. It could be true. Like, they could be totally honest, not trying to grift, not trying to swindle. The immediate red flag that I get is when somebody has such a hardcore testimonial story, and that's their their reason why. It's mm-hmm. like, I had this one divine moment that changed everything for me, and ever since then, I've been on this path, and I want to help other people get on this path, too. Like, that's the same exact line for cults. It's the same line for grifters. It's the same line for religions. Everything like that happens, and that's how they get people on board. Because you might not have had that divine moment, but it's so real for the person telling you that now you're bought in and you want that too. Mm-hmm. You want the touch of God. Like, that's that's a huge red flag. Um, Wait, why is it a, a red flag? Because I feel like sometimes testimonials are are good. They're compelling. They're yeah. And it also, like, I think sometimes with testimonials, like, the reason why they're a testimonial and why they're so powerful to people is because it is how other people relate and don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. So just because some people may not have had that exact moment, their story of how they got to that moment is the relatable part. And it can also, like, not to say every single cult is bad. Like, it's not, right? Like, yeah. both you and I are part of cults that I would love everyone to do CrossFit. You would love everyone to do jujitsu. Yeah. And so I feel like my story leading up to how I got into CrossFit, maybe other people feel that way too. Like for me, I was feeling really shitty about myself. I felt like I didn't have any confidence in literally doing a pull-up or a push-up. And that was something I was insecure about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to be strong and I don't want to keep feeling shitty about my body. I was one that never really excelled at team sports. I love team sports, but I didn't necessarily excel at being the star on the team. Mm -hmm. And so getting into CrossFit, it's kind of like an individual sport that you're doing with people. So you have that community. So before getting into it, I just 
never really felt confident physically. I never looked at myself as an athlete, but then I get into CrossFit and now I feel like a fucking athlete, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I don't think CrossFit is necessarily a bad cult and that's my testimonial. So I don't think testimonial testimonials are necessarily like a red flag no, to me. You, you checked three boxes and my, my hackles went up immediately on your testimonial. Right now? Right. Yes. <laughs> so, number one, you were... Am I a grifter? <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll sell out soon. Uh, so you were a lost soul looking for purpose, looking for something to fix a problem. Yes. You had a problem, lack of confidence. Yep. Okay. Number two, you find a community. You're looking for community, and it gives you that boost of confidence. Now you're part of something. Right. Number three, you've accomplished something now, and you want other people to feel as good as you do. You have just checked the boxes of what a testimonial takes to be compelling and get people interested and behind the ball. Okay. That is the red flag. I'm not saying (laughs) what you're saying is bad or inaccurate or like you're trying to swindle somebody. You have no benefit if someone joins CrossFit or not. So that's that's right. where you're disconnected from being the grifter. Yeah. The part that stands out is when you see that time and time again with these spiritual gurus, with everybody under the sun who's a grifter, I'll help you get rich quick. I got here, you can too. It always starts out preying on lost souls. It's always somebody who's looking for a direction. People are looking for a leader. Mm-hmm. And they establish themselves with their own personal testimonial as credibility. And then... What they do to give themselves more credibility, they make good points. They make very good points. And that builds in your mind a little level of credibility where now you're going to listen and be more interested. And that's that's where all of these like super successful alpha sales bros are winning. When you say good points, what do you mean by good points? Like just points that can't really be disagreed on? Like No, straight up sometimes you're right. Like you make a factual statement that okay. gives you credibility. Like I, before CrossFit, could not do a pull-up. I started doing CrossFit and training and I built the confidence and the strength and now I can and I'll demonstrate it. And you do a pull-up. Like that's that's given you credibility to how great that thing is. Right. How powerful that thing is. Like that's, that's the credibility point that somebody can't take away from your argument mm-hmm. and it helps build your argument as you go on. Okay. So when, you, when you're a sales bro and you're like, I'm making all of these sales because I have a wonderful team that supports me. I'm surrounded by hyper successful, hyper driven people and iron sharpens iron. Like, don't you want to be iron? Don't you want to be good? Don't you want to make money and put food on the table? Look at me. I've got a Lamborghini. This is the third one this week. Like (laughs) it starts getting crazy. Okay. Uh, But let's, uh, let's kind of shift and pivot into things to look out for in a grifter because we're touching on that now. Um, The other thing that I think stands out of what a grifter does, and my hackles go up again, they tell you everything you want to hear. That's why I said you checked all my boxes. You got me invested. I was lost before. I had a hard time. I found community. I accomplished something, and you can too. That's a compelling argument to people. Mm -hmm. So watch out for that. When you hear everything that you want to hear, that's why Donald Trump is like a magnate. Okay, that's why he appeals to the working class and the middle class. Because he's pointing out bullshit, which builds his credibility. And then he goes, I'm going to represent you. I'm your leader. I'm your guru. Follow me. Yeah. Because this other guy. And then they use fear tactics. Fear mongering is super, super successful in guiding people. Because it's like, you don't want nuclear war to happen. Right. I'll prevent that. Like, I'm Jesus. Follow me. Yeah. That's, that's what they go after. I feel like with the telling you what you want to hear, like we need to get a little bit more specific when mm-hmm. we're talking about these things because just like a grifter will be general mm-hmm. with what you want to hear, I feel like that's what we're doing now a little bit. Okay. So I feel like when they say what you want to hear, they're always creating like a goal, like a very ideal goal of where you would want to be, but they don't talk about the process to get there. Mm-hmm. It's always about the lifestyle that you want to achieve. It's always about where, you, like who you want to be, who is your future self. They always talk about the end goal, but they don't talk about the process mm-hmm. because the process doesn't exist. The process is literally you giving money and them getting rich. Mm-hmm. Like I think <laughs> that's something that we have to point out because yeah. I, they are very general with their words. Mm-hmm. It's it's not specific. And I think if you want to actually make your goals happen, you have to be specific about them. And it takes time. It's not going to be a quick fix type of situation. And also ask questions of like, 
if they are going to be very general with you, like push back and be like, well, what is the first step? Mm -hmm. And how long did that take you? Like almost like in project manager mode where you're like, how much time is this going to take? Who's going to be involved? What are the obstacles that yeah, you Yeah, what are the challenges that I'm going to be coming across? How much money am I going to be putting into this in, in phase one, in step one? Mm -hmm. Like it's not, you have to have the money to do anything really to get started. Right. Like whether you're working with someone who's going to invest in you and maybe give you a loan or whether you have money saved up, it's going to be money spent. Mm -hmm. It's not free. Nothing so anyway, in this world is free. Yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Um, things to spot a grift like I'd have those checklists of things where I'm like, and you're grifting. You got me. So hearing things that you like is a big one. Like part of, I think, the the new conservative grift and going after young Christians 18 to 35 is because we've had major tech layoffs and they happen to have the most amount of money. They are the purchasing power. So those are the people you're going after. That means you're going to probably lean more right. You're going to talk about faith protecting family, family values, and being able to provide. Mm -hmm. Like those are all things that resonate, I think, deep down with a lot of people. And you're like, okay, I'm on board. And then they tell you all the things you want to hear. But you have to pay attention to like a very clear conflict in character or in their story and call those out. Because part of grifters and how they get further and further is that enough people around them heard bullshit and let it slide. That happened with Sam Bankman Freed. You have this guy who is kind of smart. He's a smart individual surrounded by like four friends and they start this multi-billion dollar company that's going to revolutionize how online money works. It's like the new New York Stock Exchange online, right? There were very clear issues about him not be able, being able to articulate like how the Web3 worked, how any of their product worked, how it actually like just the entire business plan. Right. Like he couldn't clearly articulate that. But enough real people who had credibility around him invested into him and that gave him more credibility. And so because they didn't call out the bullshit early on, it was only after the fact when they start looking at like, wait, this is a group of nerds like doing a bunch of Adderall and having gangbangs in the Bahamas and spending <laughs> billions of dollars. That was, that's real. Like, and they got caught for it. So being able to ask the uncomfortable questions and poke holes in a story is huge. Being able to say no it's the people who can't that are the, the most prone to being a victim. Guilty. Yep, same. And then one of the other things that it's a tactic they'll use, when you're asking a clarifying question, they'll make you feel stupid. They'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, you don't get it? Maybe you're not one of us. That's fine. We'll, we'll be good without you. And they'll try and get you to buy in that way too. Where it's like, oh, you're dumb for asking questions. Why don't you get it? I think they also use that tactic in tandem with complimenting you. Mm -hmm. It's like a compliment shit sandwich mm -hmm. where they're mean to you, then they say something nice to you, and then they shit on you again. Yeah. I like I they love a they re much analogy. <laughs> like, like they reel you in a little bit and then they just pummel you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't feel good. But you almost feel like not whipped by them in a way, but you're just like almost now wanting to prove that you're not a dumb person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get you bought in. Right. Yeah, I love the analogy of a shit sandwich. A little tangent for a moment. Because you don't have to take a shit and then sandwich it between two pieces of bread. If I made you a sandwich and then I smeared some poop with it, that's still a shit sandwich. <laughs> I like okay. Like, don't worry. There's there's chicken in the middle. There's a little dookie on it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's a chicken sandwich, okay? <laughs> it's still a shit sandwich. It's got shit on it. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Uh, um, the other, I think everybody likes to put themselves on this pedestal and be like, I wouldn't get conned. Like griffs don't work on me. They work on everybody. And part of that boils down to like, most people assume that everyone is good. Most people assume that the world thinks the way that they do. Those are the two tricks. Right. Right. Like there's a lot of bad people out there and not everybody thinks the way that you do. Right. In fact, most people don't think the way that you do. But the way that society works, it works just well enough that people aren't assholes. People aren't cutting you off in traffic all the time. You're not getting in a car wreck every single day. People aren't dying in the streets next to you. So you assume most people are good and they think like me. Not the case. And that's where grifters and like sociopaths 
get their leachy little palms in. They're like, I am just like you. Listen to me. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary that those people exist and are out there, but I think there's more people like that than not. Yeah. Well, this is kind of a long shot. I'll try and connect the ideas, but if everybody thought the way that you did, communism would work. And it doesn't. (laughs) People will enrich themselves given the opportunity. They'll take advantage of people literally because they have that opportunity to. And if everybody was on the same page, communism would, in theory, be great. Yeah. But it's not because there's assholes out there who will be like, now that I have all of the money and all of the guns and all of the power, you're going to be a slave. (laughs) You thought you were going to be an artist? (laughs) We don't need artists. We need farmers. Get to work. (laughs) That's... That's happened in every single country in communism. They promise we're going to feed everybody, we're going to clothe everybody, you're going to have a job. You want to be that dancing lesbian artist? You've got it. And then the moment that they take power, they take all the guns, they take all your money, and now you get to be a rice farmer. So, communism's bad. Happy (laughs) fourth. I think to, to kind of wrap it up, I think the main thing is to be skeptical and to ask questions. Because I think for me growing up, I was always asking questions, but I was asking dumb questions. Like I wasn't actually listening to the people that I would talk to. Like I feel like I needed to be a little bit more intentional in conversation. And like, as I've gotten older, I realized that you're the, the questions that you're asking are important Mm -hmm. and it could literally mean whether you get into Vima (laughs) and start (laughs) buying $600 worth of Vima products or saying no to the sharks that are in the Meadowood Mall in Reno. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they'll get you. They'll get they'll get you. So it's like just be aware, ask questions, be intentional and know your values, know where you stand and know that it will take time for success. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it will take time for success. <laughs> All right. Shall we wrap it? Yes, let's wrap it up. Happy Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week and don't get into a pyramid scheme.